every year we experience changes of seasons like summer, autumn, winter and spring. These changes can be explained with the help of two concepts. The revolution of the earth around the sun and its tilted axis. We know that the earth takes approximately 365 days to complete one revolution around the sun. Let's see the journey of the earth in one full year. Let's start with the month of January. It's the beginning of a new year after all. After the journey of three months, that is around March, earth reaches somewhere here. During this time, the Northern Hemisphere experiences the spring season and the Southern Hemisphere experiences the autumn season. On 22nd March, Earth's axis makes an angle of 90 degrees with the Sun. As you can see, this entire half of the Earth will get 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. This is what we call an equinox. That means equal lengths for both days and nights. In this position, the equatorial region gets direct sunlight. The Earth moves in its orbit and about three months later in the month of June reaches this position. As you can see, in this position, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. Consequently, the northern hemisphere will experience longer days and shorter nights. On 21st June, the sunlight is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer and the Northern Hemisphere experiences its longest day and shortest night of the year. This is what we call the Summer Solstice or the June Solstice. The opposite happens in the Southern Hemisphere. The days are shorter and the nights are longer. And because it is tilted away from the sun, they will experience winters. We can see something interesting happening over the poles as well. On the North Pole, there is daylight for 24 hours. And on the South Pole, it's 24 hours of darkness. As the days pass, the Earth continues its journey. And now it's around the middle of September. The sun's rays are hitting the Earth's axis again at 90 degrees, just like the month of March. Around this time, the Northern Hemisphere experiences the Autumn season and the Southern Hemisphere experiences the Spring season. On the 23rd of September, the Earth will experience 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. This is again called an equinox. The Earth completes its journey and reaches this position around December. As you can see, the Southern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. Thus, it will experience longer days and shorter nights. Thus, we can say it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere. The opposite happens in the Northern Hemisphere. As it is tilted away from the Sun, they experience the winter season. The days are shorter and the nights are longer. On 21st December, the Sun is directly overhead above the Tropic of Capricorn. On this day, the Northern Hemisphere will have the shortest duration of daytime and the longest duration of nighttime. This is also called as December Solstice or Winter Solstice. Look what happens over the South Pole. We have 24 hours of daylight. And in the North Pole, it's 24 hours of darkness. So this summarizes the change of seasons that we experience over the Earth as it goes on around the Sun. Now, we'll study about a concept called the apparent motion of the Sun. We know the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees and it revolves around the Sun. 
In this position, the northern hemisphere is oriented or tilted towards the sun. And after about six months, the southern hemisphere is oriented or tilted towards the sun. So, if you are an observer on Earth, you will feel that the sun has moved towards the south. As time passes, again you will feel that it starts moving towards the north. This motion of the sun from the point of view of a person on Earth is called the apparent motion of the sun. People have observed the apparent movement of the sun and how it affects the seasonal cycle. If we observe this motion, you can see that there is a certain point until which the sun's rays can reach the earth directly. This means that there are places where the sun's rays hit the earth exactly perpendicular to the earth's surface. At these places, the sun appears directly overhead at noon or at the zenith. The position of the sun with respect to the earth can be experienced till the Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere. And when the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer, it is called Summer Solstice. After this point, the sun starts moving towards the south. So if you are someone located in the north of the Tropic of Cancer, you will never witness the sun directly overhead. It will always appear to be to the south of the south. Now, as the sun moves towards the south, its direct rays can be experienced only till the Tropic of Capricorn in the southern hemisphere. When the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn, it is called the winter solstice. After this point, the sun starts moving towards the north. So if you are someone living to the south of the Tropic of Capricorn, again, you will never see the sun directly overhead. It will always appear to the north of the zenith. Indians also observed this northward and southward movement of the sun and gave them special names. The apparent northward movement of the sun from the Tropic of Capricorn to the Tropic of Cancer is called Uttarayana. And the apparent southward movement of the sun from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn is called Dakshinayana. Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn are the latitudes that mark the extreme northern and the southernmost points respectively until which the sun's rays hit the earth directly. Now what do we mean by the Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle? First, let's see three positions of the sun. Here, sun is directly overhead at the equator. In this one, the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer or it is the summer solstice. And in this one, the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn or it is the winter solstice. Now observe the polar regions. In the first case, both the North and the South Poles will experience days and nights of equal length. What happens in this position? Is this a summer solstice? The South Pole is entirely in the dark. This means that for 24 hours, there will be night time. And this will happen for all the places below this point. If I were to draw a parallel corresponding to this point, it would be the Antarctic Circle at 66.5 degrees south. Thus, we can say the Antarctic Circle is a parallel that marks the northern limit of the area within which, at the summer solstice, the sun does not rise. But look at the North Pole. For 24 hours, it will be daytime. Imagine the sun not setting for the whole day. Alright? Now, let's look at the third position, that is the winter solstice. This time, 
it is the North Pole that would be experiencing night time for 24 hours. This is experienced by all the places until this point. If I were to draw a parallel corresponding to this point, it would be the Arctic Circle at 66.5 degrees north. Thus, we can say the Arctic Circle is a parallel that marks the southern limit of the area within which, at the winter solstice, the sun does not rise. And for the South Pole in this position, it will be time for 24 hours. We can see that the North Pole experiences six months of daylight or summer season. That is when the sun moves from the equator to the Tropic of Cancer and back to the equator. The North Pole also experiences six months of night or winter when the sun moves from the equator to the Tropic of Capricorn and back to the equator. And vice versa is also true for the South Pole. Till now, we saw how the Earth revolves around the Sun in an elliptical orbit and how its axis of rotation is tilted at 23.5 degrees. But do these parameters remain constant forever? Well, no. Over a very long period of time, these parameters do change. These changes in the Earth's movement and their consequent effect on the overall climate is described by Milankovitch cycles. The Milankovitch cycles have three aspects. First is the Earth's axial tilt with respect to its orbital plane, which is called obliquity. Second is the shape of the Earth's orbit, known as eccentricity. And third, is the direction in which the Earth's axis of rotation is pointed, which is known as precession. According to the Milankovitch theory, these parameters, namely obliquity, eccentricity and precision, change over time in a cyclic fashion. Let's see how these changes occur. Firstly, we have obliquity or the Earth's actual tilt. The Earth's actual tilt varies between 21.5 and 24.5 degrees over the course of about 41,000 years. Currently, it is around 23.4 degrees to be precise, or about halfway between its extremes. Then we have eccentricity. The Earth's orbit around the Sun isn't perfectly circular but it's pretty close. Over time, the gravity pull of Jupiter and Saturn causes the shape of the Earth's orbit to vary from nearly circular to slightly elliptical. Eccentricity measures how much the shape of the Earth's orbit departs from a perfect circle. These variations affect the distance between the Earth and the Sun quite considerably. Currently, the Earth's eccentricity is near its least elliptical version. Or in other words, it is almost circular and is very slowly decreasing in a cycle that spans for about 1 lakh or 100,000 years. And lastly, we have precision. As the Earth rotates, it wobbles slightly upon its axis, like a slightly off-center spinning top. This wobble is due to the tidal forces caused by the gravitational influence of the Sun and the Moon. This trend of the wobbling axis can be observed with respect to the fixed positions of stars. The cycle of actual precision spans about 25,000 771.5 years. The small changes set in motion by Milankovitch cycles operate separately. Together, they end up influencing the Earth's climate over very long time spans. 
coming and going of ice ages. Conversion of the Sahara from a land of lush green vegetation and lakes to a desert are just a few examples of how these small changes can have a large impact on the global climatic conditions.